Hey guys, welcome back to a Merry Christmas version of Fun Food Friday. This week I'm sharing with you a recipe that my mom used to make all the time for Christmas. It is a chocolate and coconut bar cookie. And so we're gonna show you how to make that today. It's something that I have loved since my mom started making it and I brought it into our own home and I'm gonna share it with you today. Right, I will put the recipe in the description down below so that you can have it if you're really interested, but I'm gonna go through everything with you. Uh, we're gonna start out, we've got a cup and a quarter of regular plain granulated sugar. So we're gonna get that into our mixer. You can do this by hand if you want. Not really a, a, a problem to do by hand, but uh, if you have a mixer, sure, go ahead and use it. And also, I've got a pile of butter, so this tells you how lovely this is for, for you. Um, this is actually a half a pound, and we're gonna get this going. I'm just gonna toss them all in there. I'm gonna put this on low, let it kind of kind of cream together for a couple of minutes, and then we'll move on. <laughs> kind of gotta pull the bowl up to the to the blade. I am using a paddle blade. Pat, I am using a paddle blade for this, so. Now I did let that butter come to room temperature, made this a lot easier process. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of what I have it looking like so you can kind of get an idea. That's just butter and sugar in there. Once that is all creamed together, we're gonna go ahead and add three whole eggs. I've pre-cracked them, but add those in. And while this is going, you probably wanna go ahead and get your uh, oven started. I've got it set to 350 degrees. That's where it's gonna to need to be to, to bake this up. And you wanna get this well incorporated, so I'm just kinda of using a spatula here to get stuff unstuck from the side of the bowl. Yeah, we've got our eggs, our butter, and our sugar together. Now we're gonna add a cup of flour, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and just a teaspoon of salt. Now, the recipe typically does call for this to be sifted in. I don't carry a sifter around with me. Um, so, we'll just dump it in. I started that on low so that the flour didn't go flying everywhere. And once it kind of slowed down a little bit and started coming together, I turned it up, whipped it for a little little moment. And now we're gonna be adding a cup of nuts. You can use, uh, like we are, almonds or pecans, walnuts, whatever's your favorite. Or if you can't have nuts, go without. I have a prepared baking pan here that's about 15 by 12. So we're gonna uh, it's prepared with just uh, shortening, so greased, not floured. All right, so this is a relatively thick batter. You can see how it uh, kind of sticks to the, the spatula here. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this placed down into this pan and spread evenly. Oh man, it smells so good. All that cocoa in there. like I didn't mix a couple of these spots just well enough but I'm kind of committed now we are do our best to incorporate that as we spread it around this is a three layer cookie um, so each layer is gonna be pretty thin and it's baked in multiple parts so as you can see, I'm just kind of using the edge of the spatula, creating a straight edge so that I can get a nice flat layer. And once I'm done, I'm gonna kind of clean up any of the excess off the edges so that it doesn't cause burning. Now I did want to share a tip with you uh, and we'll be able to see once it's done baking 
uh, how well this tip works. What I've done is I put a pizza stone inside the oven and actually propped it up on a uh, another baking dish, like a round cake pan, just to make sure that there's plenty of airflow into the holes. And I've let the uh, stove heat up for probably about 20 minutes to a half hour now. So this is my hope to actually get the uh, bottom of this to prevent it from burning. So into the oven we go. So we've got the timer going for 18 minutes. So while that's baking, our work is not done yet. So we're gonna take a can of sweetened condensed milk, 15 ounces, this one happens to be 14. I think that will be okay. And we're gonna be looking for two cups of coconut. Uh, we're using sweetened flaked coconut. Uh, the sweetened is actually better. I've tried this with the unsweetened, not so good. I'm gonna mix this in a four cup Pyrex so that I know that I have plenty of room. And it's got a measuring uh, lines built right in. There we go. Now we've got two cups and a whole can of sweetened condensed milk. And we've got an interested cat, apparently. Meow, meow. Oh, you thought it was cat food. <laughs> it's just sweetened condensed milk. It's not cat food. That's silly. We are gonna have to give you a treat. And basically, you just wanna combine this really well so it creates a coconut milk or coconut condensed milk paste because that's going to go on the first layer and then we're going to bake this one. Another thing that I did want to point out is that when the first layer comes out of the oven it is not going to be fully set and that's okay because this goodness has to be baked on as well. Again it's really thick as you can see but this creates an amazing flavor and texture on this cookie bar. So once that is mixed up, you've still got a few minutes left on your timer. So you can go ahead and take a seat. Maybe wash your dishes, whatever you want to do. All right, 18 minutes has passed. Looks like we're pretty good. Oh, and fun tip. Uh, I use muffin tins as an additional cooling rack. But we're not gonna let this cool completely. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the uh, center filling on here. We're gonna spread it pretty thin as well. All right, <clears throat> we've got this whole thing covered in coconut goodness. And we're gonna go ahead and get it back in that 350 degree oven. Now I, I'm gonna turn it around. 180 degrees from where it was. Just to try to even things out a little bit. That's gonna cook for another 15 minutes. Got that timer going. We can take a break right now. And once it comes out, well, we'll just sit around for a little while because it's gotta cool down before the next step. All right, now we're just seeing the starts of toasting. That is exactly the amount of toast that we're looking for. Just a little bit. The edges are starting to crisp up a little bit. We're just gonna go ahead now and let this cool completely. And then once it's completely cool, we're gonna add the third and final layer and we'll be right back with that. Now we're ready for the last step, which is to ice this thing and get some nuts on top of it. So I've melted two tablespoons of butter in this bowl. And to that, we're gonna add three tablespoons of cocoa. two, and three. So we've got our butter and our milk and our cocoa. 
my amount of powdered sugar is on my recipe. <laughs> so this is gonna be fun to figure out. Butter, cocoa, vanilla, milk, chopped nuts. Does not say how much powdered sugar. So we're gonna wing it. All right, I think I've gotten this to the consistency that I want. Still pretty thick, kind of like an icing, but it should be spreadable. Give that a pour. And get all that yummy, rich, chocolatey, sweet goodness right on top of there. And once you have it all spread out, you can sprinkle some more nuts on top. There you have it. Now it's time the icing has set to cut into this delicious goodness. All right, there you have it. See the beautiful coconut in the middle there. Hmm. They turned out delicious. I hope yours do too. Let me know what you thought of this video if you'd like to see me cook some more stuff for you. And uh, I don't know, have an amazing Christmas and holiday season. We'll see you next time.